The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the Royal North Shore Hospital COVID-19 obstetrics work instruction. The management of obstetric patients during the COVID-19 pandemic requires a multidisciplinary approach. This guideline aims to present a unified approach to the challenging management of these patients. Sarah is a 31-year-old female, G1P0, who is a known close contact of a COVID-positive case and hence has been identified as high risk for COVID-19. For this reason, she is in a single delivery room with a face mask on. Note, as in this case, the room is preferably birth room 3 as it is a negative pressure room. Sarah has been in labour for over 12 hours and after a review, the obstetrics registrar identifies a failure to progress. The obstetrics registrar contacts his or her consultant to discuss Sarah's progress. A decision is made to progress to a Category 2 emergency caesarean section. The obstetrics registrar must then contact the theatre floor manager, the duty anaesthetist and the CSB anaesthetic registrar. The theatre floor manager will follow a checklist which will, amongst other things, prompt them to touch base with the duty anaesthetist, then ring switch to send out a page, individually contact the COVID support nurse, NICU registrar and consultant, obstetrics consultant, and assemble the theatre nursing team. With all clinicians, the following should be communicated. The timing of the huddle, confirmation of whether the clinician will attend in person or via the phone, if en route, that the patient cannot be sent for until the huddle occurs. Then, they will contact the ward team leader to ensure the patient is ready for transfer pending completion of the huddle. To prepare the patient for transfer, the ward team leader will contact HealthShare extension 67900 to organise an SSO if in the birth unit or an SSO and a cleaner if in any other location. They will state that they require an urgent transfer of a COVID positive patient. They will also ensure the patient is wearing a surgical mask and that their CTG monitoring is removed prior to transport. The patient is not to leave the ward until the huddle in the operating theatre has occurred and the operating theatre floor manager has sent for the patient. If a partner is present, they will not be able to accompany the patient from this point. The anaesthetic team huddle can occur either whilst waiting for the full team to assemble or following the full team huddle. The anaesthetic team huddle should occur in the Theatre 17 viewing area using the cognitive aid to guide the discussion. The discussion should include the anaesthetic plan for the patient, a general anaesthetic versus neuraxial, the staff required within the room and outside the room, and the post-operative destination for the patient. The combined obstetric anaesthetic neonatal team huddle occurs in the Theatre 17 viewing area and will proceed when all clinicians are present in person or via the phone. The team should utilise the cognitive aids that are mounted in the viewing areas to guide discussions during the huddle. They should specifically discuss whether a medical escort is required for the patient whether additional staff above the operating theatre team may be required to transfer the patient from their bed to the operating table. The team should reiterate the path for the baby once delivery is complete and establish the mother's post-operative disposition. At the conclusion of the huddle, the COVID support nurse and anaesthetist confirm with the team that the patient can be sent for. The theatre floor manager will be informed of this and they will, in turn, contact the ward to send for the patient. At the same time, the theatre team will begin donning airborne PPE using the donning aids provided and ensure buddy checking is practised. Once the patient is sent for, the obstetric and anaesthetic teams will begin preparing the equipment. To minimise equipment contamination and wastage, COVID-19 caesarean section packs, drug packs, neuraxial packs and airway packs will be available. 
the NICU team will move the equipment that they require from Operating Theatre 2 to the anteroom and anaesthetic bay of Operating Theatre 17 prior to the patient's arrival. The patient will be transported to the Operating Theatre complex by an SSO and their midwife if they are in the birth unit. Additional clinicians may be required depending on the patient's clinical condition. A cleaner and scout runner will only be required if the patient is being transported from a location other than the birth unit. The ward team leader should contact the operating theatre floor manager to inform them that the patient is en route. To reiterate, the patient will have a surgical mask on and CTG monitoring will be removed for transport their partner will not be allowed to make the journey from the birth unit. Their journey takes the following route. Out the doors of the birth unit. Through the bridge connecting the CSB and the ASB and through the hallway until they arrive at the red line next to the brown lifts. Here, they will be met by the anaesthetic team that consists of an anaesthetist and two anaesthetic nurses. The anaesthetic team will check the patient in to the theatre complex. The SSO should then doff at the red line. They should not enter the operating theatre complex. If no one is at the red line, the midwife can ask the SSO to go to the operating theatre front desk and advise them that the patient has arrived. Once the patient has been checked in, she will be brought into the operating theatre complex. The team will turn right and travel anti-clockwise, past the front desk, operating theatre 2 and around to operating theatre 17. There will be signs on the floor en route. She will be brought directly into the room and transferred to the operating theatre bed by the anaesthetics team, obstetrics team and scout if possible. The OA will only be involved if absolutely required. The midwife will follow the patient into the operating theatre and head straight to the bin outside the anteroom where she will doff her gown and gloves and then enter the anteroom where she will doff her eyewear and mask. The patient's bed will remain in the operating theatre against the anaesthetic bay entry doors. The anaesthetics team will perform the spinal or epidural top-up on the operating table. A Category 1 caesarean section may require a general anaesthetic depending on the patient and the clinical context. If this is the case, the patient should be prepped and draped prior to induction as per non-COVID patients. If a GA is required, we recommend two anaesthetists be in the room and to refer to the CAT training for a COVID safe intubation. Upon delivery of the baby, the obstetrician will walk to the anteroom door. The door will be opened by the scout nurse and the obstetrician will place the neonate into the perspex crib and then move back into the operating theatre. As soon as the door between the anteroom and the operating theatre is closed, the midwife will then enter the anteroom and transport the neonate via the viewing area to the Theatre 17 anaesthetic bay where the neonatal team will be waiting to perform their assessment. Neonatal blood gases will be attended in theatres as required and placed into the anteroom for the midwife to collect after the care of the newborn is handed over to the NICU team. The obstetrician will check the placenta at the end of the case and will provide a pathology request form. The placenta will be placed by a scrub nurse into a plastic drawstring bag. The scout nurse will place the placenta into a second plastic bag and then into a white specimen bucket in the anteroom. The scout nurse will ensure that the placenta is transferred from the operating theatre to the birth unit dirty utility room by an SSO. The midwife will then complete the required documentation and ensure that the placenta and the documentation is transferred to pathology. At the conclusion of surgery, the patient will be transferred to a ward bed and cleaned. Then, all members of the theatre team, except for one obstetrics doctor, will exit the operating theatre 
after doffing down to their N95 mask and eyewear using the doffing aids provided and buddy checking each other. They will remove their N95 and eyewear in the anteroom before exiting. A fully donned recovery nurse will enter the operating theatre and recover the patient with the obstetrician for 30 minutes. The obstetrician will remain with the patient and perform fundal checks and assess for postpartum blood loss. After 30 minutes, they will request an OA and the obstetrician will doff and exit the operating theatre. The mother will be taken by the recovery nurse and the OA out of the theatre complex. They will exit theatre 17 and turn right, then, walking anti-clockwise, walk around operating theatre 9, PACU, until they reach the red line outside operating theatres 6 and 7. Here, they will meet an SSO who will push the bed back to the isolation room on the birth unit. If the mother required intubation for surgery, she will be transferred to the ICU by the anaesthetic team at the conclusion of surgery. If the mother was unwell in any way and unfit for the birth unit, she would require transfer to the ICU or the COVID ward by a clinician. The specific nature of the transport team would be at the team's discretion. There are multiple potential dispositions for the neonate. A well neonate will accompany the mother to the birth unit and will be transferred to the postnatal ward in a humidic crib. A well neonate, but one requiring NICU, will be transferred in a panda with shuttle. A premature neonate or neonate with low birth weight will require transfer to NICU in a giraffe with shuttle.